you've all heard of the Wright brothers, right? Yeah. yeah. The Wright brothers, the first guys to put a motor on a plane and fly into the sky. The Wright brothers did a great job of flying around in circles at fairs, but they had more trouble going across country long distances. So there was another guy named Glenn Curtis who made planes that could fly farther. And in 1910, May 29, 100 years ago, today, <laughs> Yay! Glenn oh. Curtis flew from Albany to Manhattan to win $10,000. And, he, and he, it was the first time anybody had ever flown that far in the United States. And he could stop a couple times because engines were kind of finicky and they needed to get gas and oil a lot. So he took off from Albany early in the morning and he flew down the Hudson at a nice low altitude. Because these were like, it's like flying a kite. Any kind of wind is going to be buffeting you. And he stopped in Poughkeepsie and refueled. And he had to add oil manually every few minutes. And so he only had so much. And he's adding oil and he's adding oil. And around Yonkers, he realizes he's out of oil. What's he going to do? Then like suddenly, land in Yonkers. What's he going to get? If he lands in Yonkers, you land too many times, you don't win the money. And so, uh, saw a nice beautiful lawn in the distance beyond the Harlem River. You can tell that that lawn is in Manhattan. That's the promised land. I want to go there. And so he decided to swing out around the river, around, out over the Hudson and in through this the opening between Inwood Park and Spite and Dival. And he flew in through there, low across the Harlem River and landed on the grass that he saw. Yeah, big grassy field, right here. Just down by the Indian Road playground, all the way up to here was grass. And um, it happened to be owned by this guy's daughter, William Isham, and the house was right here. And it just so happened that, I should call him Mr. Isham, but is really the in-law, so it, Mr. Collins was the guy's name. He was reading the paper on this porch, and he heard something. How, you know, in those days, hearing a motor like that would have been a real head-scratching kind of thing. What's going on? I hear a motor in the sky. And he looked over and he saw the plane landing on his lawn while he was reading the paper. A hundred years ago today. Oh, that's him! And he, and he was reading the paper about... He might have been reading the paper about the flight. <laughs> so he went down to introduce himself and Glenn Curtis said, do you have oil? Yes. Can you get me some gasoline? Yes. Can I use your phone? Yes. And so he made the phone call. Within a few minutes, a New York Times reporter, because of course this was a newsworthy event, people were following him to see if he was, could really do it. They were following him in boats on the Hudson, right? In boats on the Hudson, there was a train too. I think the New York Times guy might have been in a car. Um, and so a New York Times guy appeared, and within an hour, they said like, People came out of nowhere. This was a very rural area. Um, the subway had just arrived. And they turned his plane around. They phoned the viewing stands down on Governor's Island and said he'll be there soon. He's going to try to make it. He's all gassed up. And they turned his plane around, paced it downhill, and hoped that he would get enough airspeed to not crash before he the other side of the got hill. to the other side of Inwood Hill. Yeah. <laughs> And he did, and he made it. Air he was airborne, and an hour, t an hour later or so, he was at uh, Governor's Island. He landed there to all the festivities and parades. But the real amazing story happened right here. Yeah. Where was that house? Where was that house? Yeah. This house. Can I go down? Turn up. This is the this is the Isham House, and there's one thing in this picture that hasn't changed. The circle. You see the circle? Yeah. The circle is that circle. So it was right there, right where that. Was. Yeah. And so the house, you could see there were some people working in Bruce's garden. Right on the other side of that fence would have been this part of the house. And this part is coming out towards us. So it's almost like, uh, like this. One end facing out towards Park Terrace East and one end facing in uh, Park. Anyway, they, this house was part of the park for a while. They tore down, I think, in the 1930s. Right here. Yeah. Uh, I think there's still a foundation there, another story. <laughs>
So this is Glenn Curtis. The, they called him the Birdman after this. <laughs> Glenn Curtis the Birdman. And 25 years later, on the 25th anniversary of this flight, uh, Mayor LaGuardia flew from Albany to Manhattan on a state-of-the-art plane. And then 50 years ago, they made a replica of the plane and flew it probably at a higher altitude than Glenn Curtis flew. This looks like it's really high. And so this is a plane that's, that's being test flown for the 50th anniversary of the flight. It was big news, uh, but it's not big news anymore. Um, this is the celebration and the commemoration right here for Glenn Curtis's uh, flight. So we're all here at 100 years ago tonight. Yay! Well, that's, why don't you stand over there and let me be a group, group picture and then we'll give everybody a Oh, shall we take a picture of all the kids? Yeah, yeah. 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 my guys, take a picture. Why don't you take a picture of all the kids? Our balsa gliders for everybody. Whoa. These are, these are really easy to put together balsa gliders and we're going to, this doesn't have a tail. We're going to put them together and we're going to fly. I would put it this way just to have a little... Up to see it's molded up a little bit. Okay. I think that's gonna fly just fine. Yeah, this oh maybe we could You know what? There's not an I think it will fly any way you want. That's not gonna first thing. One of these pieces works. Complete with a nose thing. Separate the tail from the That's the one thing you separate. Oh you break Oh, that's cool, Jonathan.